Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Technologies Discussion Channel. For this video, I'd like to continue the discussion on S parameters. On my previous few series discussion on S parameter, I mainly focus on the theory aspect of the S parameter. For this video, okay, I'd like to concentrate on the practical aspect of S parameter. So let's imagine you build a new filter, you build a new antenna. How can you actually obtain the S parameters of your newly built circuit? So basically, you can actually obtain the S parameter by measure okay, with the help of the vector network analyzer. So basically, this will be the first objective of this video. On my second objective of the video, I will explain why we need to do a calibration before we can do any form of measurement. Typical so-called calibration will be the short, open, low, true, basically type of calibration. Then we can actually start to use the vector network analyzer. So basically all this will be the objective of this video. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Okay? Or if not, if you want to have a faster response, please ask me your question through the command. Before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help me by like this video. Give me a few seconds. Press the like button now. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. Let's quickly understand what is actually a vector network analyzer. A VNA okay, basically will be just an electronics test and management instrument that also be using to measure the electrical performance but mainly focus on the high frequency component circuit and network. So basically, in short, the key concentration will be high frequency. In short, VNA is only utilized when you actually want to obtain high frequency so-called parameters. This VNA, they actually categorize the device okay, by analyze their scattering parameters, which describe how RF signal actually interact with the DUT. Okay, so this is actually your DUT. Okay, so basically this is the equipment that you actually want to measure. This is actually the VNA. So over here you can see that the VNA actually generate a signal okay, to interact with your DUT. And based on the transmission and revision and reflection, they will actually obtain your S parameter, which we are going to take a closer look later on. But this roughly gives you an idea how does a VNA actually work. There are mainly two types of network analyzer. The cheaper one will be the scalar network analyzer, while the more expensive one will be the vector network analyzer. What will be the key difference? For SNA, they will be just measure the amplitude property only, while the VNA, they will measure both the amplitude and also the phase property. Let's take a look on this S parameters over here. This measurement is actually obtained by VNA. As you can see that this is actually the amplitude. This will be the phase. So this is what as described by VNA. So this value is actually provided by VNA. As for SNA, you probably can only obtain the amplitude only without the phase. So basically this will be the key difference between scalar network analyzer and Vector Network Analyzer. Let's come to the key functions of Vector Network Analyzer. As I have highlighted earlier on, the key thing is to obtain the S parameters. What is actually S parameters? Okay, so basically this set of S parameters, they will quantify how a DUT actually respond to RF microwave signal through the reflection and transmission, which I have briefly mentioned just now. Okay, so in short, okay, if you want to know more about this S11, S21, S22, and S12, you can take a look on my earlier on series discussion on S parameters. But over here, okay, so if you measure your S11, okay, this is actually for the return loss. And from here, okay, you can see that how well your impedance matching is done at port 1, okay, which means that S11 should be as low as possible. If it's as low as possible, then you actually have done a amazing work in terms of impedance matching. As for S21, this is called the 
forward transmission can either will it be a gain or a loss. Basically, this will describe how well the signal actually will be able to transfer from port 1 to port 2, which means that how much in terms of percentage, let's say, will be able to send from port 1 to port 2. Okay, so basically, this is what we know as S21. S22 is something similar with S11, except that it actually take from port 2 rather than port 1. Same for S12. Okay, so basically, S12 is known as the reverse transmission gain or reverse because it actually determines how well the signal sent from port 2 to port 1. So hence, they actually name as reverse transmission gain or loss. Let me just quickly describe how you can actually use the vector network analyzer. Okay, so this VNA actually use an internal source to generate a known simultaneous signal. Okay, so basically this VNA generate a signal. Okay, so this signal in terms of magnitude and phase, it already know the characteristics. So they generate this signal and then this signal is then applied to the input port of the DUT. As you see the over here. So this is your DUT. This so-called known signal actually will interact with your DUT. Okay, some of the signal okay, will be reflected from the input port. Okay, so basically, when you actually generate this signal, when they reach the DUT, some of them will be returning back. So basically, you can imagine that I have a receiver sensor over here to measure how much will be reflected back. Okay, so basically, this is what it means over here. Some of it will pass through the DUT. Okay, so some of the signal will be able to pass through the DUT. And in fact, they will reach the output port. Okay, so therefore, the VNA will actually categorize the performance of the DUT in terms of its reflection and also the transmission coefficient by measuring the magnitudes and also the phase of both the incident and reflector wave at each port. Okay, so basically, in short, let me quickly describe this again. So I actually send a known signal over here. Okay, so basically, this known signal actually propagate to the input of the DUT. Some will be reflected back. And basically, the VNA measure how much is actually reflected back. Next, some of them will be able to pass through the DUT. And then basically, this return signal actually will be returned through another part of the VNA. So again, they will know how much will be so-called sent from port 1 to port 2. With this, they will be able to generate out the S parameter. Okay, so again, imagine that after that, again, they will supply a known so-called signal at the port 2 and again some will be reflected back and the vna will measure how much will be reflected back again you can imagine some will be able to go through the dut and then it will be actually returned back to another port of the vna and again from there it will be able to know how much will be able to pass through the dut with this you have successfully generate the whole s parameters Okay, so besides you measure the S parameters, basically you can also use the VNA okay, in the frequency domain analyze. Okay, basically, if let's say this is the S11, if you are going to measure the performance of the antenna over here, you can actually evaluate the performance. For example, I can conclude that this antenna is a dual band antenna. Okay, it works at 1.32 and 2.9 gigahertz. For example, now let's say you need to move the 2.9 to 2.4 then you probably need to consider to increase the size of the antenna in order to achieve this. So basically, in short, okay, by one glance at the S11, you will be able to determine okay, the frequency that the, actually the antenna actually operate at. So basically, this is also another use of VNA. Next, okay, in terms of the magnitude, okay, which I have explained just now, okay, so basically from here, you can see that this will be the magnitude of the S11 and S21. Okay, so basically S11 and S21, they are inverse proportional. Okay, so basically you can obtain this. And then for phase, you need to have a VNA. Okay, so this will be your phase measurement. You can see that from minus 180 degree to 180 degree. So this will be the phase measurement for the VNA. Okay, so maybe in the future, I will use another video to describe how to obtain so-called the phase delay from this phase measurement here. Okay, so next Okay, will be impedance. Okay, so basically this impedance will be very important because they actually help us to design the matching network. Okay, for example, you can so-called select the Smith chart okay, on your vector network analyzer 
and you can actually stroll along the point okay, to find the frequency that you want to use. And from that particular frequency, you actually can obtain the impedance. And from here, you can design your impedance matching network. Okay, so basically, this is the use of factor network analyzer. Let me concentrate on why we need to do calibration before we actually use the factor network analyzer. But before I go into the analyze of this calibration, I urge you again, if you have learned something from this video, help me, give me a few seconds to press the like button. Okay, so this is very important to me because when more of you guys actually help to press the like button, this video will have a better chances to reach up to a larger audience. So guys, help me press the like button now. Again, if you have learned something from this video, urge you to support me by subscribing to this channel and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for song support. Let's quickly understand why we need to do calibration before we can actually use the VNA. Okay, so there are various reasons okay, why we need to do the calibration. I will come to this on my next slides here, but let me quickly describe why we need to do calibration before we can do the measurement. Okay, so imagine this, you have bought a new VNA. It comes with this equipment, VNA, and also maybe some essential cables, but you may not choose to use the same exact so-called cables that is actually provided when you actually firstly purchase the VNA. Let's say you decided to use your own cable so therefore, the supplier of this VNA, their reference is only up to this port, okay, which is at the output port of the VNA, that's all. They're only able to calibrate at the point of the output of the so-called N-type connector of the VNA, that's all. So therefore, because anybody is free to use any types of cable, so basically when you actually do your calibration, okay, you actually do it at the end, of the cable. For example, you put a short circuit over here, you put a open circuit, you put a load, and then you do a true. True. Okay, so basically you actually recalibrate, shifting the reference point from this so-called at the output of the factor network analyzer all the way to the cable end. So therefore, you are required to do a calibration okay, before you actually use your vector network analyzer. This is the reason why. It's, in short, it's simply just to shift the reference point okay, over here all the way to the reference point at the tips of the antenna, uh, sorry, at the tips of the cable. Okay, so basically, this is the reason why you need to do calibration. Okay, let's come to the key discussion on the calibration here. Okay, so a vector network analyzer, okay, the key purpose is to use the measurement in terms of S parameters. Basically, the S parameters will be able to characterize the frequency response of the RF and also the microwave device. Okay, however, before we can do any form of measurement, we need to do a calibration. Why we need to do a calibration? Okay, firstly, when we actually do this calibration, we actually remove the systematic error. Okay, so basically the calibration eliminate away the inaccuracy that is caused by cable loss, connector mismatch, and the VNA imperfection. So basically this is what I mean early on. Okay, so basically when you actually do a calibration, okay, they actually take care of the cable loss as I illustrate over here. Okay, so basically they take care of the cable loss. For example, if you have some form of connector, okay, so you, you have this form of connector, they also will do the connector mismatch calibration also. Okay, so basically this is the first reason okay, is to remove away the systematic error. Next, this is to ensure accuracy okay, by referencing the known standard. Okay, basically we use the open, short, look and true, which I have described earlier on. Okay, the VNA actually compensate for the hardware limitation. Next, okay, with the calibration, this actually will help us to improve in terms of the repeatability, which means that we are able to get a constant result rather than fluctuation results. Okay, so basically this is the reason why we need to do calibration also. Okay, so proper calibration ensure consistent result across different test setup. Okay, because you move your reference point all the way, okay, all the way to the tips of the cable. Imagine, okay, everybody use different cable, then you will have different set of S parameters. So therefore, when we actually do the calibration, when we actually move the reference point from here to the tips of the cab uh, cables, then you actually will be 
able to account for the repetitivity. Next, this will account for any form of environment effect. Okay, so any form of temperature change and cable movement, this can actually tolerate errors, okay, which calibration can help mitigate. Okay, so this is uh, very minimum. Okay, most of the so-called key reason why you need, need to do calibration is actually these three. Okay, so without calibration, s parameter measurement may include significant error. This may lead to unreliable data. Coming to my last slides here, okay, so I have mentioned okay, we, we are required to do calibration before we can do any form of measurement on the vector network analyzer. These are the common calibration type. Okay, so I have discussed shortly okay, on this short open loop through. Okay, so basically, this will be the most general purpose of two-port calibration. Okay, so if you are using waveguide and non coercive environment, then you probably can consider to use this true reflect line method. Okay, so basically, hopefully my next few video discussion, I will discuss in depth all these common calibration type. Okay, so e-calibration uh, nowadays, because we are getting so-called smarter in a way, the equipment also getting smarter. So we have this e-cal, everything will be automatic. You don't need to change anything on the end of the cable. So basically, this is what we call the e-cal. With this, i like to end my discussion. Please help to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.